Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Unzube and I'm a PhD student studying data science in the US. On this channel, we explore the tips and the hacks that helps us live more meaningful and intentional lives. So if that's your thing, please consider subscribing. Today I'll be sharing with you the three-part framework which I use in selecting courses. I call this framework the GIC. So let's jump right in. The first thing are the global trends. This one is important because you don't want to select a course that would phase out in the near future. You know, we move from the Industrial Revolution, which started around the 1760s, to the Information Revolution, the Information Age, which started around the 1970s. As this revolution changes, the emphasis and the courses that are relevant also change as well. During the Industrial Revolution, the factory workers were the big boys of the day. But now that we've moved to information age, it's changed drastically. We can't accurately predict which revolution we are going to next. But then based on the current trends and global trends, which I'm sure you must have seen, it looks like the world is headed towards an AI revolution. With the rise of ChatGPT, Spotify, and other AI tools, we see that AI is rising and as AI is rising, a lot of jobs are going to start becoming obsolete. You want to study a course that AI cannot replace, for example, psychology. You can see that no matter how big AI becomes, human beings will still need human interaction. And the next point is for you to smash the like button if this video has been helpful to you so far. Thank you so much. And number two is your interest and your first degree. This is the I in the GIC framework. So you want to take some time out to ask yourself, what kind of life? do I want to live? What kind of future do I see myself in? Now, these are important questions that will give you a pointer as to the kind of degree that you should get. Because yes, although I know that there are several ways of getting jobs, for instance, you could do projects and from there show your portfolio and you can get a job. But an easier way is just through your degree. For example, though my bachelor's was in mathematics and there aren't really so much jobs you can do with a math degree, I did my master's in applied statistics. And so with this master's degree, I was able to get a data analyst job. So you want to ask yourself the kind of work that you want to do, the kind of job that you enjoy doing. This will push you to research to know what kind of jobs are actually available. And apart from looking at your interests, you also want to look at your first degree because it will give you some form of unfair advantage. If two of us are coming to study a chemistry program, for instance, and then I did chemistry in my first degree, and the other person did psychology. It will be easier for me to get into the program, especially if I came out with a good first degree than the psychology person. Although in the US, you must not continue in the line of your degree. I know several people that they studied probably like biology in first degree and then in masters, they are doing data science. Although you want to have a clear picture of the kind of future you want to leave completely, you can have a good idea of what the next step is going to be. So for example, using my own story for instance, when I wanted to do my first degree, I had interest in mathematics. I loved maths. I didn't know which engineering course to study. That's why I didn't do engineering. And so I decided, okay, I love maths. I know maths. Let me study maths. And then when I was studying maths, I found out that, okay, there's an aspect of maths that I actually enjoy more, which is statistics. Okay, fine. Let's press more into that area. I didn't really like pure math where we did a lot of proofs and all of that. And so I decided to delve in more into statistics. Getting my master's, I chose applied statistics. Now, while studying applied statistics, I'd already heard of data science, data analysts, and all of that. And it's something I was interested in. It's something that, okay, wow, I like what they do, count me in. And so after studying my master's in applied statistics, I decided to get a PhD in data science. And that's now what I'm currently studying. And so you could also want to look at the next best step for you. You've taken your first degree in this area. Okay, what aspect of that did I like actually that I can press in further during my master's? Now moving on, the final and third point is the country. So your desired country. You know the matter is that when it comes to grad school, the country matters. I didn't really know this because I was in STEM and so things were just flowing smoothly for me. It was until I met people that weren't in STEM that I was like, wow, everybody is not having the same experience in the US. Now, I'm not saying that non-STEM programs are not being recognized, but US places priority on STEM programs. Usually for STEM people in the US, after they study, they can work for up to three years, even before they now get a work visa. While non-STEM programs, the OPT is just one year. That's before you can get a work visa. 
But I think that other countries like Canada, UK, and the rest, they are more open to non-STEM degrees. So you also want to look for job opportunities in the program that you would like to study. Now, I want you to remember that the university system is also a business. Yes, so these universities, they also want to make money from students. That's why a lot of them are set up. It's not just to impact knowledge. And so they might be offering degrees where you don't really have great job opportunities afterwards. So these are things that you want to check on platforms like LinkedIn, Indeed and the likes to know would this be worth it at the end of the day. It's in the 7 Habits of Highly Effective People that Stephen Covey said starts with the end in mind. So with the GIC framework, you are starting with the end in mind. Please let me know in the comment section if there are any other points I might have missed out when selecting a course for grad school. After choosing the course that you want to study, the next thing naturally is to now build your list of ideal universities. And there are several criteria you have to look at when building your universities. I mentioned all of them in this video right here, which you want to check out next. Wired did a video where they tested different jobs that AI could replace. Thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And then I'll see you in the next one. Bye.